Thursday afternoon chat with your favorite artists with Jay Off. Ladies and gentlemen, a first timer on the show, and we play a bunch of his music, so it's about time we had him, Andrew Rip. What's up, my dude? Hello. <laughs> it's good to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, we're going to do, we don't do this very often, but somebody told me, you got to have him bring his guitar. And usually when people say, hey, you want them to bring your guitar? I'm like, no, nah, I'll just push play. Yeah. The songs, they spent thousands on producing it. Yeah. Let's, well, let's just, just push play. Yeah. Let's get our money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll have we'll have you break out the guitar in just a little bit. Um, and uh, let's start with this green screen behind us. We give you an option of what you want as a backdrop right. while we talk. So if people click on um, something from socials, um, you know, they'll see... Like we've had Josh Baldwin, who I know you yeah love him. Uh, yeah, he chose the moon before, so we did the whole interview with the oh, moon. Oh, that's incredible! And space behind us. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you a few options. You can choose a stadium of your choosing. Wow. An, an igloo, a strawberry field, the mall, uh, a barber shop, a NASCAR race, a pumpkin patch, grocery store. What would you like behind us? Wow. We can pick. We can do anything if something comes to your mind. I mean, just the thing. Uh, can we just go to a tropical place and just enjoy Hawaii? I like Hawaii. I've never been there. Let's go there. Okay, here we go. Alex, whatever you can give us, Hawaii. <sighs> Dude, you feel the sunshine? Oh, aloha. Oh, it's not too much, but it's just enough. Yeah. Feels uh, good. Doesn't ma- mahalo mean? Mahalo. Yeah. Yeah. That means like hello and goodbye. I believe so. Yeah. I'm just going to go with you on that. I've okay. never been there. I don't have the skinny on the lingo. Yeah. But it feels right. As yeah. a Seattle kid, Hawaii is where your rich friends went on vacation. Got it. Your not rich friends drove all the way down to Southern California because they had <laughs> nicer beaches than us. That's amazing. And sunshine. We'd heard of that yep. and we read about it in books. Yeah. But you have to go to SoCal to get it. How far down did you go? It's you all go the LA? way down to Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, okay, all yeah. that. And it's just like, oh, this is what it feels like on my skin. It's incredible down there. Yeah, I um, lived in Azusa, Azusa for a long time. It was a college. My, my wife went to Azusa yeah. Pacific. I pretended like I went to Azusa Pacific, but went to the college next door. Huh. Saved a whole lot of money, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That's what Rudy did. Oh, uh, it is didn't what Rudy did. Go to Notre did. Dame. He went That's to Holy right, Cross. Holy Cross. <laughs> and it worked out for him in the end of yeah. that movie, didn't it? Yeah. Um, but met my wife there, and I love Newport specifically because when I met the Lord it was in that season. I was early twenties yeah. and, um, I remember driving, we would drive from Azusa to Newport to go to a church called rock Harbor huh. down there. This guy named Mike Erie, who's now in Nashville preaching at the journey church here. But huh. anyway, I would drive an hour every weekend to go just yeah. to be in, just soak in the presence. There. Oh yeah. It was awesome. That's great. Yeah. Actually, let's grab uh, this bingo wheel in front of you. It's yep. just a way for me to be able to get to my random questions for you. Okay. Uh, there's obviously a number and a letter on here. What have you... Uh, let's give it a spin here. Okay. Spin it for me. All right. What's your number you got let's there? see here. We got G51. G51. That correlates with my question here. Okay. Um, if you were forced, Andrew, to grow up in the Wild West, how would you have fared? Uh, picture Old mm. West Tombstone. Yeah. Let's just say you were born into that era. Mm. Do you think you would have thrived or barely survived, or would you have been consumed? Come on, brother. I would have crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing quite like horseback. Yeah. Just man's man kind of stuff. You yeah. know, you, you fall off a horse, you just get back up. Right. That's the deal. I like that style. I've always so, wanted to walk into a saloon. Yeah. Where you swing those doors open. Oh, dude, you, have you learn how to do the the flip the gun right oh, back yeah. into the. Oh, come on. But the but the part that scared me is the awkwardness yeah. of all those dudes sitting at that saloon. Yeah. Bar, and it's like I don't if I'm late for church, I will listen in the lobby because I don't like people going. Droop. Oh wow! So yeah. that saloon, when everybody would walk in and uh-huh. all the people sitting there with their jugs turn and look at whoever walked in, I'm like, oh, I oh cringe. my gosh, the- that's scary. Yeah, it is. Where are you from, boy? Oh man, <laughs> I'm telling you that there's something so. Um, I just we talked about living in California, and there's a a lot of the westerns were shot in this one kind of area that's up kind of towards Malibu. Yeah. 
And um, a friend of mine owns a horse ranch up there. So oh, we wow. would always ride horses through the Western town. Oh, wow. And that's what I immediately thought of when you asked me that question. Because I've kind of done it. Oh, yeah. Not really, but like, you oh, know. All the John Wayne stuff was All the John Wayne. Yeah, absolutely. Right up in there. Right there. It's just one old school saloon style town in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Have you seen Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood? The, uh, uh, I know of it. It's the uh, Quentin Tarantino film. <laughs> yeah. And it's shot there. Huh. It's so cool, man. You know what they should do? If somebody, if it's not a big Hollywood company, like to to give people like me, you know, in City Slickers where Billy Crystal oh, goes yeah. out, it's like you can pay for the experience of, of herding cattle. Like I can see booking an Airbnb for the experience of, hey, this Airbnb is an old Western town. So, yeah. So if you stay here, but then you can walk down the street yep. and uh, yep. walk into us, you know, that would be awesome. That'd be a great Airbnb. And you could live out your nightmare where you are the guy walking yeah, into yeah. the saloon. Everybody turning. I like it. I need to get over that because I will literally, I need to be there in church, but I just don't want people staring at me when I walk in. Hey man, uh, it's yeah. all good. I don't blame you. Yeah, we're ministering to me today. I need to get over my fears. <laughs> we don't do live music often. I like to push play on a track, but you've brought your guitar and I heard that the mixture of your voice and guitar are too beautiful to pass up. Whoa. So. I don't know who told you that. Later, uh, your wife texted us. She's <laughs> like, you know, it's good for his. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to do a new song that nobody's heard pretty much like on the radio or anything yeah. coming up in a little bit. But let's do the song everybody knows, um, Fill My Cup. I'm going to step out of the way. Uh, so here's my song, Fill My Cup. You know, a little backstory on this one. Uh, I feel like people can get a little misled because of this title. It's Fill My Cup, but it's really not about me. Um, this is about spilling over into the lives of other people you know i uh heard once that our fullness isn't measured by what's in our cup it's measured by the overflow and that has always stuck with me so i've always felt like man there's got to be a song kind of based around that idea and um this one came flying out i for me the way i fill my own personal spiritual cup is by quiet time you know um sometimes i'll take a walk with the dog sometimes it's riding the bike through the park. Other times I'm sitting in the word in my, you know, prayer closet, just doing my own thing. But regardless of what it is, I think the importance of quiet time, filling up our spiritual cups. When we walk into the coffee shop, you know, we don't even necessarily have to say anything. People can just feel the presence of God in our lives. People can just feel the peace, the joy, the love that's on us. Um, so that's been my prayer as of late. Hope you like this song. If you don't, just pretend like you do. Let's do this thing. Here we go. I've been walking to a city I cannot see Through the depths of the valley where the sun can't reach I've been high, I've been low I've been looking for the river that could fill my soul Been walking to a city I cannot see mm, Fill my cup, Lord Run it over I Give me love, give me joy, give me peace Fill my cup, Lord Run it over I am your child in Lord, I need you to fill my cup. Ooh, 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 ooh. I've been walking over life, standing in my way. Let them say what they want, I don't want what they say. Cause I was born far from home. I've been thriving in the water of the great unknown Cause I'm drinking from a well from another place Oh, fill my cup, Lord Run it over Give me love, give me joy, give me peace Oh, fill my cup, Lord Run it over
glass up with hope and fill my plans up with purpose fill my wounds up with healing lord i need you to fill my cup fill my days up with dream fill my nights up with vision goodness grace and provision lord i need you and when i get to that city i cannot see I know that even this valley was a golden stream. Oh, fill my cup, Lord. Run it over. Give me love, give me joy, give me peace. Hey, hey, fill my cup, Lord. And run it over. I am your child in need. Lord, I need you to fill my cup. Let's go into another song right here. Now, this is not a song our entire audience would have would have known, but I like that better when you uh, you know give us a song that that you care about yeah. and that maybe has a story. Um, are you gonna do roses right here? Correct. Okay, I'm gonna step out of the way again so we can get um, uh, just video of you without me staring right in your face as you <laughs> sing. <laughs> so, uh, whenever you are ready with guitar to tell Let's us about it. this, all right. This is a song. That I wrote on my front porch right before uh, the pandemic happened. Wasn't even on my radar. A tornado had just come through my, um, or sorry, it hadn't come through yet. It was about to, like the next week, the Nashville tornado that came through hit my house. And there was a rose vine right next to me on the front porch. I'd, I'd owned this house for like 10 years. This little two bedroom, one bath house in East Nashville. And, um, it's always been home to me. The sweetness of the front porch or just something about it. Uh, that's my quiet space. So I go out there a lot of times with my journal and just start writing. And this one particular day, I looked over my left and there's this rose vine that had been sitting there since I bought the house however many years prior. Um, but for some reason, I noticed them and I began to kind of just zero in on them, almost like take a magnifying glass out and just focus on on the beauty that the Lord had created that I oftentimes just walk right past. And um, these words just began to kind of spill out on the page. Um, it's a song called Roses. I just began to think about the cross in a, in a brand new way. So this is called Roses. Hold on, that's getting a little funky here. This is a song called Roses. Ever wonder what was on the mind of the maker When it turned all of our sorrow into fields of grace Right here in the middle of earth and heaven Caught between the romance and the pain Can't you see that he must have known about the heartbreak Long before us He must have known about the mistakes Still he chose us, planted the tree where he would die, put thorns down the vine. Then he wore them, love is the blood red stain, beauty that the pain exposes. Maybe that's why God made roses. Maybe that's why God made God is in the whisper if you listen closely And winter means the spring is just a breath away So 
Don't go any faster than this very moment Sing a hallelujah in the pouring rain Can't you see that you must have known about the heartbreak Long before us Must have known about the mistakes Still he chose us Planted the tree where he would die Put thorns down the vine Then he wore them Love is the blood red stain Beauty that the pain exposes Maybe that's why God made roses Maybe that's why God made roses Just like petals fall into the ground We fall into the one whose resurrection's here and now All things made new and just like petals fall into the ground We fall into the one whose resurrection's here and now all things made known Can't you see that he must have known about the heartbreak Long before us Must have known about the mistakes And still he chose us Planted the tree where he would die Put thorns down the vine Then he wore them Love is the blood Stain, beauty that the pain exposes Maybe that's why God made roses Maybe that's why God made roses mm -hmm. Andrew Rip is my guest and um, the this is a question I've been before we get back to random questions here um, being possibly our most handsome artist on our playlist, yes. according to a recent survey of single female staff members, does it ever get awkward with fans? You're a married guy, but you know, anytime somebody is a good looking guy out there doing shows, you're going to have fans and hey. it's going to be females. How does your wife, does it get awkward? Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know that girl should come yeah. take a picture. I think, um, first of all, I'm flattered. It's something I've never had to deal with. So. I'm, dude, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't done a poll. You haven't been in the poll. But um, I would say because of the fact that, first of all, I mean, I've been doing this a long time, and my wife has been a part of the entire journey. Yeah. We've gone through so much um, just kind of like, you know, we've gone through it in our marriage. Mm -hmm. and. We've gone through it all the way to the point where we did let each other go yeah. at one point before we got married. We had a six month breakup about three years into our relationship, six months breakup. We came back together. And when we came back together, I remember us both just being like, if we're going to get back together, mm. it's forever. Yeah. So we already know the feel of like losing each other. Yeah. And we wound up coming back. So there's a trust there um, that has been built by way of experience that I think it's been really beneficial for us in that regard. Yeah. Although, like, honestly, I don't really get I, I, you say that. I don't really get okay. that. I don't. I don't. <laughs> but if I did. Yeah. I'd be really, first of all, flattered, but also just like, yeah. I mean, my hey, wife, my, my, you, you got to see my I, have a, my, I have a hot wife. bro. I believe you. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> Way outside of my league. Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and spin our, let's our go. wheel here. Um, let's get this. Uh, all right, what do you got? B2. I like it. All right, what do you recall what trend you followed when you were young? A trend that hit, what, what would you have been, 80s? Yeah, mid-80s. Okay, was there a trend you can look back and go, yeah, I was into that big one? That um, I mean, musically? Uh, anything. Fashion, First music. First thing that I thought of, I remember thinking I was pretty cool in high school because I started wearing a tie, like a loose tie. Yeah. Like I'd wear... Just randomly. I just had like jeans on. Was it like, Ska era? Uh, it it was, but I wasn't like emo. Okay. I was just like, yeah. I was kind of 
cool with a bunch of different crowds. I wasn't the prom king. Yeah. But I was cool with those guys. And I wasn't like, you know, sitting at the chess table. Right. But I was cool with those guys. I was somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, but I had this this tie and I, I felt really good about it because I remember being the first one in my school. Right. And then they started turning up more and more. Ah, oh yeah. You. <laughs> so I might have set that trend. I don't know if it was a good one. Was it hey, clip on? Or? It was not. It was okay. the real deal. I actually learned how to tie it and everything. And that's before YouTube. It so was somebody YouTube. had to teach you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's exactly right. I wore hammer pants for Yes, you did. In junior high, but we couldn't afford the real real ones that MC Hammer was wearing. Yeah. So we got knockoff hammer pants. Yep. And they were essentially what you'd wear on a mountain skiing warmth wise. So <laughs> oh I'd be walking gosh. around in order to feel cool. I'd wear these hammer pants that were lined with straight wool dude, and sweat would be pouring off my face. But the price for being cool, because they look like real hammer pants. Yeah. Beauty is pain. That's yeah. what my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> let's That's let's good. go into um, just to get some good solid meat here. If yeah. you can think of it in 2022, what's a bit of scripture that has sort of tattooed itself to you that you're like, mm. so far this year, this one has stuck out to really tattoo itself to my heart. I mean, I'm going to go like as simple as it could possibly get, which most people have this legitimately tattooed on their body. Yeah. Be still and know that I'm God. There's something, there was a level of that, um, an understanding that I don't think I would ever have experienced or even cared to experience if it wasn't for the pandemic and everything shutting down. Mm. I did this thing where basically sat with each word of that scripture for a day. So first one, I went through the entire, be still and know that I'm God, be still and know that I am, be still and know that I, and sit with it and let the Lord kind of reveal what, Mm -hmm. and I just got into this space of, you know, just because there's your schedule does, isn't full doesn't mean it just because there's nothing on your schedule doesn't mean it's not full. Right. If you choose to fill it with the things that are, Going to, if you choose to fill your schedule with truth, that I've had to fight for that now. Now that I've had a song work at radio, and now the next one, it's just like if I'm not careful, my time can just get away from me. And if I don't spend time with the Lord, mm. I mean, that's so important to me. If I don't have that, I just I wind up in a mess, and I don't have anything to give. Mm-hmm. And then I'm singing a song about a full cup, and I'm half empty, and I can't do that. Yeah. So um, that scripture has been a reminder for me of how important it is to get quiet Mm -hmm. and stay there. Right. Not like for two minutes, but I mean like stay in it. Yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Especially those with ADD. With ADD, which I have, and a kid running around the house and a job. Yeah. And it's like, how do I manage all this? Well, What's important? Yeah. You know, I know we need sleep, but right. it get up that 15 minutes early has been very yeah. beneficial to me. I, our back patio was used to be my place, but I'm noticing I end up, if I'm out there for 30 minutes, 25 of those minutes, I'm going, I got to fix that. Right. Oh, my the bana- distractions. My yeah. banana trees. I'm staring at those going, oh, that's going to be a choice. Oh, yeah. next week. So I, I'm almost at the point where, you know, I talk about a closet. I'm almost at the point where I need to go physically into a closet, shut the door. Right. So that I can stare at nothing but clothes that that's don't good. fit. You know, that's really good. You know, I have a just a very uninspiring, almost dungeon of a basement that in my little house. And I set up my little desk down there because there's no windows yeah. and I can't. The guy's not running by, like, working out, and then somebody's riding their bike, and right. the, the bird flies. It's like, no, 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 it's just me, a candle. Yeah, I do the nothing. same thing. I do a candle just for, I don't know. Yeah. To, like, it's nature There's or something. something about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, great uh, finally having you on. Looking forward to new stuff uh, coming in the future. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks, JR. The Thursday Afternoon Chat. Your favorite artists with JR.